Hello everybody, this is Lara with your first new gold video of 2023 for the week ending Friday 6th of January. Upward movement was expected but I had a limit and that was breached. I posted an updated chart and comments after that happened and now upward more upward movement is expected. The next target for resistance 1919.03. Just be aware and we'll remind ourselves that gold as a commodity has a particular tendency to sharp tops so blow off tops so it will should be expected to end this movement quite likely with a fair amount of strength which is probably still building this is still the preferred Elliott wave count the big picture is bearish it sees a huge expanded flat correction unfolding for a grand super cycle fourth wave within the expanded flat here is the end of wave B and the start of super cycle C which may only subdivide as a five wave motive structure there are only two of those ending diagonals and impulses for C waves an ending diagonal would require all of subwaves cycle 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 to subdivide as zigzags. If cycle 1 is a leading diagonal and not a zigzag, we can eliminate the possibility of an ending diagonal for super cycle C. I hope that makes sense. If cycle 1 is a leading expanding diagonal, then it's followed with a very deep zigzag for cycle 2. This is normal behaviour for a second wave following a first wave leading diagonal. When 2 ends, 3 begins. Cycle 3 may only subdivide as an impulse because this is an impulse for super cycle C, not an ending diagonal. So cycle 3 must subdivide as an impulse and it will have to meet all Elliott wave rules for that structure. And primary 1 must subdivide as a 5 wave structure. It does. It subdivides as an impulse. Primary 2 must subdivide as a corrective structure. It is. It's subdividing as an expanded flat, quite common, structures. Primary wave 2 may not move beyond the start of 1 above 2065.89. To the downside, primary wave 3 must then unfold and must remove below primary 1 price territory. And then primary 4, a multi-week consolidation, should then begin and may not move into wave 1 price territory. And then primary 5 should move lower and must subdivide as a 5 wave structure. The target for cycle 3 is for it to reach 2.618 the length of cycle 1 at 1037 and the final target for super cycle C to end the huge expanded flat remains the same. It will reach 1.618 the length of super cycle A at 657. That's a common ratio between A and C waves within expanded flats. Here's an expanded flat in the, in the um, opposite direction, intermediate A, B, and intermediate C has moved beyond the end of A. The target now for primary 2 is for it to reach the 0.618 Fibonacci ratio of primary 1 at 1919.03. Within the expanded flat, intermediate B is a 1.53 length of A. That's okay, it's a little beyond the common range of up to 1.38, but still well within an allowable limit of up to, one, of up to 2. Let's take a look at how intermediate C is unfolding on the daily chart. This low of intermediate B is this point down here. Intermediate C unfolding as an impulse with minor 1, 2, 3, 4 and minor 5 now extending. Minor 3 is extended. It's longer than minor 1. It looks like minor 5 is also extending. That's okay. One or two actionary waves within an impulse may be extended. All Elliott wave rules here are met. Minor wave 5 extending beginning with minute 1 and 2, minute 3 extending beginning with minuet 1 and 2, minuet 3 extending beginning with sub minuet 1 and 2, sub minuet 3 extending beginning with micro 1 and 2, and micro 3 extending beginning with sub micro 1 and 2. I can't label this micro 3 and 4 because 4 has slightly overlapped or what would be 4 has overlapped wave 1 price territory, so this is not micro 4. And so this wave count now has a series of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 overlapping first and second waves. Within minor 5 it is expecting an increase in upward momentum. It may break, price may break above the upper edge of this channel and we may see a curved end to minor wave 5. That's actually quite normal behaviour for gold when it ends its strong bullish movements. Within minor 5, 
Mini Wet 4 may not move into Wave 1 price territory below 1823.77. So after we can see the middle of the third wave, we'll expect a series of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 for little fourth wave corrections, which may be more brief than their counterpart second waves, and so upward movement is not expected to move in a straight line. But we have to see the middle of the third wave unfold, and then these fourth waves all have to remain above their counterpart first wave price territory. So a series of corrections that remain above these respective highs. At the weekly chart level this is a bullish wave count and is judged to have a lower probability. It has multiple problems in terms of the Elliott wave structure, most of them off to the left of the chart. The biggest most obvious one here is the structure of cycle 4, a double zigzag but primary Y has barely moved beyond the end of primary W and primary X is very deep and time consuming. This does not look like a normal double zigzag, it has a sideways look. Double zigzags should have a clear counter trend structure or counter trend slope. But if the bear market for Grand Super Cycle 4 was over in December 2015, then Super Cycle Wave 1 may be an incomplete impulse. With Cycle 1 and 2 complete well off to the left of the chart, here's 3, 4, and 5. The target is for Cycle 5 to reach equality in length with Cycle 3 at 2526. At the daily chart level, here's the end of cycle 4, and within cycle 5, intermediate 1, incomplete, with minor 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. This part of the wave count's essentially the same for both Elliott wave counts. They're both expecting more upward movement. This week completes a fairly strong green candlestick, with some support from volume con compared to the previous two upward weeks, but overall volume is still overall declining and it's also light in this prior week, back down here, this one here. And so overall a decline in volume fits the Elliott wave count, expecting that this upward movement is a counter trend movement, but probably not over yet. Look out for next resistance at 1915, fits pretty closely with the Elliott wave uh, point Fibonacci ratio, the target at 1917. On balance volume gives us a weak bullish, well, a reasonable bullish signal breaking above some resistance here. This supports the Elliott wave count, expects more upward movement. ADX indicates there's an upward trend at the weekly time frame. RSI and money flow both neutral. ADX not nearly extreme, a long way to go before this upward trend reaches overbought and conditions reach extreme. Stochastics is overbought, but when, when ADX indicates a trend, we use money flow and RSI, not stochastics. This is here for when the market is consolidating. ATR declining as price rises. There's a little bit of weakness actually in this upward movement. On the daily chart we can see that still overall volume is still declining as price moves higher. Volume and range were stronger back here. This upward movement, even though it moved above our limit for the week, it hasn't shown an increase in volume or range beyond the early stages of this upward movement. And so we could still see an increase if we do see an increase in volume below beyond these early days of this upward trend that would be quite bullish but for now the reality is that volume is declining so we can only look at what's in front of us not try and expect what's about to come before uh, after ADX is indicating there's an upward trend at both time frames and at neither time frames are RSI overbought money flows also neutral and ADX is not indicating the trend is extreme. There's room for upward movement to continue, so expect it to continue to 1915-1917. ATR for the last few sessions showing just a little bit of an increase here. Now well, let's see if that continues. That's all from me with your gold analysis this week. I hope everyone's looking forward to an awesome weekend.